so when Biden is flying these people all over the fruited plain in the middle of the night, I didn't hear a peep out of those people, okay? I didn't hear a peep. I haven't heard a peep about all the people that have been told by Biden you can just come in and they're going, they're being abused by the cartels, they're drowning in the Rio Grande. You had 50 that died in some shed in Texas. I heard no outrage about any of that. Uh, I haven't heard outrage about all the fentanyl that's come across the border that's killing Americans in record numbers. I don't hear, I don't hear outrage about the criminal aliens that have gotten through and have then victimized people, not only in Florida, but all throughout the country. I didn't hear any outrage about that. The only thing I hear them getting upset about is you have 50 that end up in Martha's Vineyard. Then they get really upset. And I'm sorry. Those migrants were being treated horribly by Biden. They were hungry, homeless, they had no, no opportunity at all. The state of Florida, it was volunteer, offered transport to sanctuary jurisdictions because it's our view that one, the border should be secured. And we wanna have Biden reinstitute policies like remain in Mexico and making sure that people aren't overwhelming. But short of that, if you believe in open borders, then it's the sanctuary jurisdictions that should have to bear the brunt of the open borders. So that's what we're doing. But what happened was they were, they were provided um, an ability to be in the, the most posh sanctuary jurisdiction maybe in the world. And obviously it's sad that Martha's Vineyard people deported them the next day. They could have absorbed this, they chose not to. But what it shows is if 50 was a burden on one of the richest places in our country, what about all these other communities that have been overrun with hundreds or thousands? It shows you what now these policies are on the front burner. People need to be talking about. Biden can't defend his policies of open borders. Uh, it's doing huge damage uh, to our country. It's costing a lot of money. It's costing lives with the drugs that are pouring across. And so the question is, is why are you supporting Biden's policies? Why don't you step up and tell him you're failing and let's do it differently? Because you know what? He inherited a border that wasn't like this. He has created the crisis. But now at least we know nobody can deny that there's a crisis. Everybody now knows, and it was only because you had to have the elite who want to have the cost on everybody else and they don't want to have to shoulder that. That's the only reason now people are talking about this. Well, I would say read, I would tell them to read Florida statutes. We are required to teach slavery, the post-reconstruction and segregation, civil rights. Those are core parts of American history that should be taught, but it should also be taught accurately. For example, the 1619 Project is a CRT version of history. It's uh, supported by the New York Times. They want to teach our kids that the American Revolution was fought to protect slavery, and that's false. We know why the American Revolution was fought. They wrote pamphlets. We saw them dump tea into the Boston Harbor. We saw them meet in Philadelphia, and we have the records of why they revolted against King George III. And so it was the American Revolution that caused people to question slavery. No one had questioned it before we decided as Americans that we are endowed by our creator with unalienable rights and that we are all created equal. Then that birth abolition movements. So you can't teach history that's being used to pursue an ideological agenda. You can't teach uh, that the foundations of our country uh, were somehow evil. Our, our founders pledged their lives, fortune, sacred honor, and they put a marker in the sand. 
Not everything lived up to it right away, of course not. But every major movement in our country's history has gone right back to those core principles. So we want to teach history, all history. It's got to be accurate, though. And we are not going to be in a situation um, where we're taking George Washington's name off schools, taking down statues of Thomas Jefferson. And that's what those people who want CRT want to do. They want to change history. They want to delegitimize these folks, um, and that's not what we're doing. But don't let anyone tell you we don't want those subjects taught, because not only do we want it, we have it in statute that they must be taught. I can't. I cannot confirm that. I can't. Well, we, we, we do do both. So, so we've had interdiction in the panhandle. The problem is, is we're not seeing mass movements of them into Florida. So you end up with a car with maybe two. And if we know that that's illegal and there's someone that's kind of smuggling then, then committing crime, then you can do arrest. There have been drug seizures. But that's not effective enough to stop the mass migration. But it's just coming in onesie twosies. So we've had people on the border for last summer. We've done a lot of intelligence. And everyone down there will say between a third and 40% of the people coming across uh, are seeking to end up in Florida. And so we have to go and figure out, okay, who are those people likely to be? Uh, and if you can do it at the source and divert to sanctuary jurisdictions, the chance they end up in Florida is much less. And the thing is with the sanctuary, the, the idea is, is because they have more benefits or whatever they do, that people will, will be able to stick. And so that's why you're doing it. If, if I could do it all in Florida, I would. But if we just ignore the source, then you're going to have people trickling in 5, 10 a day, 20 a day. I don't know. But there's no way you can possibly track all of that because it's on such a small scale. Whereas if you know there's a, maybe 1,000 people down there and a lot of them say in Florida, well, you could say, well, hey, wait a minute. Here's a sanctuary jurisdiction. Be able to provide the transport. So if that's what you want to do, you do. And I think that that's much more effective. Than, um, than just trying to send one or two out um, at a time. Also point out, you know, there's, we have a whole infrastructure in place now because of what the legislature did. So it's not just flights, you know, we have ground, we have other things um, that, that we can do. And I'll tell you this, uh, it's already made more of an impact than anyone thought it could possibly make, uh, but we're gonna continue to make more of an impact. And I think that at, at the end of the day, what we're doing uh, is not, the ultimate solution, I think it's opening people's eyes to the solution, which is let's have a secure border, let's have remain in Mexico, let's take the cartels seriously, and let's get with the program here. What they have been doing for a year and a half or more than that is basically ignoring that the problem exists. And I know a lot of the national corporate press doesn't like to talk about it, uh, but the reality is when you have the vice president saying there's no border crisis, when we've had millions of people come across illegally, uh, you've got to be kidding me. So let's get, let's get going. Let's get this thing secured. I, unfortunately, I don't think they're going to do anything in the immediate. Uh, it will be a big issue in the elections, I can tell you that. Uh, but hopefully when we get through with that, that we can have some rationality. If we have a new Congress, you know, that may be a big step in the right direction. But this is not an example of, hey, you know, he tried his best and just didn't work. This was an intentional policy to reverse policies that were effective. And you want to talk about, they'll say like, oh, you know, sending a bus from Texas is a stunt, all this. The biggest stunt was Biden coming in as president and reversing Trump's policies just so he could virtue signal that he was against Trump. It didn't matter that the policy had worked. He had to be anti, and so that's why he did it. So he did it knowing, I think, what the impact would be, and the impact has been devastating. I really hope more people will start to cover uh, the destruction we're seeing with the fentanyl crisis. I mean, we put a lot of emphasis on it uh, when I became governor. COVID obviously made it more difficult, but what's making it almost impossible is the sheer volume of this stuff that's been pouring into the United States. And I'll run into uh, mothers, and it's so tragic because these kids are not making like really horrible decisions. Maybe they do one or two things wrong, but the fentanyl is so deadly that they'll overdose and some of them will die. 
So this is a huge, huge issue, and it's affecting American communities all across the United States. And I also think when you have things like criminal aliens that have been let in, you know, Maduro, the reports are Maduro is releasing people from his prisons and sending them up to the southern border. And you know you, these, these leftist dictators have done that in the past. So you're bringing in people, they're coming right across the border, and then they're going in the interior of the country. That's not going to be good for safety in our communities. I mean, that's going to be a big problem. And we already know that you've had uh, people that have been victimized by criminal aliens who've gotten across the border. And the reason why those crimes are so difficult to stomach is because if the federal government had just done its job, the crime would not have happened and the person would not have been victimized. So this is something that's really important. And these are things that people need to start talking about. And I think what also with Martha's Vineyard showed is the very wealthy community, 50, not a lot, uh, and they said they couldn't accommodate. And let's just take them at our word and say maybe that's true. If the wealthiest island, one of the wealthiest in America, can't accommodate 50, then you're looking at all these other communities and they're just supposed to accommodate all this more. So I think what it's shown is when you have the sheer numbers of people coming across illegally, even take out the criminal aliens, just the sheer numbers, you know, that has huge stress on the communities. And I remember last summer going down to the border and it was bad, but it's gotten a lot worse. This year is the worst year uh, that I think we've ever had in modern American history.